nothing else was on the horizon and slowly the money ran out and a friend of ours called Frank Green came in and we told him that we were going bust. He said, well, that's ridiculous. He said, I'm coming in tonight to see you. He said, I've got a friend called Connery Chapel, and he knows Lou Grade. And Jerry went to see Lou Grade and said, we want to do this series about a machine called Supercar. And Lou Grade said, oh yes, how much will it cost? I said to him, um, we've budgeted out and it'll cost £3,000 an episode. And he exploded. £3,000 an episode? I can't, I can't afford to pay you with that. This is for a kid's series. What are you talking about? He looked at me and he could see that he'd you know, shaken me and I, I was really quite frightened. And so he became very nice and his, his uncle Lou now. Look, Jerry, if you come and see me tomorrow morning at half past seven and tell me that you cut the budget in half, I'll give you an immediate contract. Well, Jerry sat down and came up with a, a, a figure which was only a third less than he'd offered to Lou Grade. Dawn was breaking and we hadn't cut it in half. And I remember saying, look, we've allowed for four cups of tea a day for the unit. What if we reduce that to two? So we went to see Lou Grade and Lou said, well, I'm afraid it's not just what you wanted, but that's, that's, our, fi that's our figure, and that's our last figure. So Lou Grade sort of got up from his chair and went, into a, went up to a door and said, just a minute, and went through into what Jerry took to be another room and came back a few seconds later and said, OK, you got yourself a series. It transpired later that the room that Lou Grade went into was not another office, an accountant's office or something. It was, in fact, a cupboard. I turned back and said, uh, Mr Grade, um, is it possible for you to let me have a letter of intent? And then again he exploded. He said, a letter of intent? My word is better than any contract or agreement you could ever get drawn up. Now get out of here and make the series. Supercar, supercar. And grace as swift as can be. Watch it flying through the air. It travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar, supercar. Supercar is set in. 1960 in the Nevada desert. With the pilot, Mike Mercury, a good, clean, all-American guy. Full throttle vertical. His rather freckled sidekick, a kid called Jimmy. All set, Jimmy? Yeah. Gee, I sure am excited. Better climb aboard, then. Of course, for merchandising, a woolly animal, which was Mitch the monkey. Mitch! If you consider that there are three characters, Mike Mercury, Jimmy, and Mitch, you ain't got a lot of dialogue going <laughs> between those three. But if you have somebody like Beaker, you begin to get some interesting dialogue going because, because he's a character. Oh, I see. Now who's a fool? <laughs> we did find it very challenging to write dialogue for him. Mitch, eek, eek, or... Mm, mm. <laughs> I shouldn't go further than that because it may be ethically wrong with the animal kingdom. And they're constantly being tailed by Master Spy who wants to steal their technology. <laughs> 